Hey guys, this is Metal Slash here again, and uh, this time I'm going over my uh, unit avoidance. Um, I'm having some difficulties recording this video because I am using a different screen capture program. My uh, debut subscription ran out because I, I just had the trial and I didn't know that, so I didn't want to pay money for the pro version, so... I'm having to try to figure out how to record. Um, I've tried a couple different programs and I've probably recorded this like three times and it's just failing so I'm seeing what I can do with this. So to start off I'm going to be talking about what I changed on my unit. I changed it quite a bit um, because it was uh, causing problems where, I mean, I know my laptop isn't the fastest computer, but it was slowing down quite a bit, and it was causing a couple of other issues. So, um, watching some videos by uh, Subvert Games, I don't know if you guys have heard of him, uh, he's a guy who, ha he's recorded his videos for the past year working on the Unity engine, and it's a pretty cool thing to watch. He's uh, made kind of a simple RPG game. Not, it's not really simple, but uh, he, he recorded his first video was just his guy moving around. It was pretty simple, but had a lot of components in it. Um, he also has his year in review where he shows everything that he's done up to his final thing, which was a tutorial on how to play his game. Is uh, really immersed, but um, he doesn't really go into how he he accomplished his uh, his objective, so he kind of just showed you what he did instead of telling you how he did it. So I'm gonna tell you guys how I do some stuff. So here I created a custom mover script. I got rid of the character control all altogether um, and just replaced it with a mover script, a collider, and rigid body. My uh, mover script I'll go into a little bit later uh, after this and uh, my mesh collider truthfully can be any type of collider it can be a box, a sphere, capsule, whatever only thing you want to make sure is to have the convex variable clicked if you don't they won't collide and I can show you when you select your units to move click in the center they don't collide at all which isn't what I want. I want them to be able to collide. So if you have it clicked, when you move them, they will all collide, and it's what I want to do. I uh, then I add a rigid body to it, and normally when you add a rigid body, your use gravity variable is clicked true. You want to unclick that because really I don't want any physics to move my units around that's not what you usually happen in RTS I mean if that's what you want sure go for it but I was having issues where the ground was causing some colliding problems so the other thing is I locked all the position and rotations so that I control every collision that happens and I can make it look however I want it to look and you have to have that rigid body for the th what I want to use in the code and uh, that's all I changed on my unit now on my code the reason for doing all of this is the on collision state event um, I was trying to use uh, sphere casting before and it just wasn't working um, I was I would cast a sphere out in front of the unit and test if it collides with any other units that are on the same team and then move them out of the way. It sounded simple that would work, didn't work. If the unit was trying to move in this special case, it was trying to move this way and uh, it happened to hit two units on uh, the same side or at a, you know this little corner here, um, it would get stuck because it wouldn't, it wouldn't read the collision at all. Now, you'd think that would be like a special case where 
when it happened very much. It happened actually very often. Now I don't know if it's because I have them on box uh, design, but it, you know, with the character controller, it had a circular design. So, you know, they shouldn't do that. But, um, so that was why I I had changed it to a, a custom script because that just wasn't working out right. I didn't want that to happen. I didn't want it to be something that happened very often. So on my collisions, um, I test if it's a unit or if it's a building. They do. I'm gonna do different things with each of them. Uh, if it's on the same team, and then I uh, I have a priority system that I've implemented where if it has a priority of zero, that means it's idle, not moving, not doing anything, just sitting there. And then if it's one, it's moving, and two, I haven't done yet, it's going to be attacking. And then I'm probably going to have some uh, sub priorities where like 1.1 is fleeing, 1.2 is uh, moving to attack. So like they have high priority because he's moving to attack something. Uh, the fleeing one, not so much. They're just running away. They're not doing anything. Uh, so how I move them out of the way, I get the normalized vector from the difference in the collider and the unit and then tell the collider uh, its mover component to move to this, uh, not to the position, but in the direction of that position. Because when you normalize, it gives you a, magn a vector magnitude of 1. So to my mover class, or not class, but script, kind of the same thing in JavaScript, but a move function takes a direction and then sets the position to that direction. Now it's key for your collisions to happen. You have to have uh, the f your movement inside the fixed update function. Otherwise it will not work. Uh, because the difference between fixed update and update is that update is a graphical uh, update and a fixed update is a physics update so your graphic update will it'll move it if that's what you want but it won't collide with anything that on collision event will not occur so in fixed update if you move it it will so one of my first things I do I make sure that it is grounded so the way I do that I cast a ray downward and actually a little bit above the unit by adding just a vector that's plus five in the y direction. So then, <coughs> if it hits the ground, I set its rigid body position. You want to make sure you you do rigid body instead of transform in this case because you're doing a physics update. And then I uh, at the hit point, it's y y point, and then add. Uh, colliders y direction divided by 2 because the position of the unit is actually in the center of it so you have to offset it from the ground by the bounds of the collider divided by 2 it's just to make sure that it's not in the ground um, then I test if it's, it's being told to move at all because if positions magnitude isn't 0 that means it's being told to move. It doesn't matter how far, it's just being told to move. Then I multiply by its the unit speed and then a delta time from when fixed update has been called. Um, that's just to fix any frame rate issues. So like if you have a little bit of a lag, it actually calculates the um, difference between that so it, ca it accounts for that change in it. Um, then I do a, another raycast. I'm doing du double raycasts here. This one is to test for obstacles that I haven't used this layer mask before. It's actually my layer that mask nine, and that is the obstacle layer mask. That contains this big cube here, a rectangle, whatever you want to call it, and then couple of other cubes that you don't see because I turned the mesh render off and I uh, 
This way, they act more like a ledge than an obstacle, but truthfully, to the unit, they act the same way. So if it collides with one of those, it's going to set its direction in the opposite way, and then set its current waypoint to the uh, end waypoint, so that basically it's being told to stop, because in that, it's told... Uh, when it reaches the end it's, it doesn't do anything else so that's all that's saying now if the direction magnitude is less than 0.375 it's just saying that if it's so small then it's gonna set direction to zero so that then my final thing that I do I tell the ridge body to move to a position in that direction. And that's about all for my mover script. Now my unit script I do a couple of things that aren't quite obvious if you're just looking at this right now but when I used to play it before if I took these units and moved them up to this ledge um, they want to all end up on this platform. You would have some of the units end up on this side part, and sometimes even above it, depending on, because the way I moved the units, th when they were being told to move, it would calculate the center of all the selected units, and then the relative position that they have from that center point and then move them relative to that command point and this w this way they're just all on the same ground which is what you want in RTS you want to be able to move your units where you want them to go instead of you know they're doing weird ass crap that doesn't make any sense so I do that by again I, uh, using the uh, obstacle layer mask, I get the uh, end point of their path calculated, and then set their that end point's y value to the command point's y value, and then I do a line cast between the two. And I don't need any of the, <coughs> the hit information because I don't need to do anything. Uh, that involves moving it. I just need to know if it hit it. If it did hit it, then I need to recalculate that path. So I recalculate to the command point. That means that every time you move the unit, it can sometimes do two path calculations. But with the A star, it's pretty quick on it because it caches some of the movements. I, uh, because I've looked at the tree diagrams that they, it creates, it caches some of those. So it's pretty quick you don't actually notice it at all um, so for my unit movement that is about it guys um, it might take me a little longer to upload this video depending on how big it is and uh, if you ha guys have any questions need any help with something uh, please post comments uh, please subscribe and like this video because uh, it took me forever to make and uh, Hopefully I'll get other videos up sooner. I'm probably going to work on um, my camera movement, like zooming in and out, and uh, doing my selection box a little better. So uh, thank you guys for watching, and see you guys later.